Hi there, it's Miracle. Today I want to take a break from my Women's Prize long list reading and talk about the book that I just finished for my feminist orchestra book club, which is a book club that created by Jen from Jen Booker's Thoughts and also hosted by Jen herself now and also Lauren from Reads and Daydreams. The book is Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks. And also in the end, I have a question about feminism communication, so stay tuned if you want to help me with that. The book is a very short concept of feminism concepts, including topics like the history and development of feminism, and uh, mainly focused on the Western countries, and also like the misunderstanding around feminism, education, beauty, women at work and at home, and violence, and a lot more. I really enjoyed reading this book. However, I think it's very hard for me to reveal it, because I'm pretty much a feminism theory newbie. <laughs> Although I call myself a feminist for as long as I can remember, I didn't read any like the theory of feminism, so I was constantly amused by everything that Bell Hooks said. So as of today, I just think I would share what I took from this book and some of my critiques of it. I love that Bell Hooks clearly explained the feminism development in Western countries, different stages, especially the stage where feminism just started, and some of the feminists, they are not quite sure what to believe. So there's a stage when people think only females can be feminist, and male can only be sexist. So that leads to a major misunderstanding of feminism, that is, people think all feminists are man-hating, which is not true. And today, we all know that male can also be feminist, and uh, females can also be sexist and people are trying to clarify this point, but the impression of man-hating feminist is still existed. And the other thing I liked is Bell's Hook's discussion about uh, classes and race. She pointed out that from different perspective, people from different classes and race have like different desire of feminism, but the vast majority of people or the media only focus on a small group of feminism's needs. When perspectives are different, not even conflict, some feminism are unable to put on other people's shoes, so they sometimes just turn their back on them. But I think we need to notice that this book was published like nearly 20 years ago, so some of the conclusion may not be true today, and I do think as of today, we are better at considering other people's perspective and sharing different opinions. But I think it's still a great reminder for us and help us to understand why feminists have like different subgenres. In the book, one thing I was especially astonished is how our unconsciously behavior of daily life is actually the result of a male domination social structure. And even for us feminists, Bell Hooks said emphasizing the male domination social structure is easier for us. She used an example of child abuse, saying that emphasizing male domination makes it easy for women, including feminist thinkers, to ignore the way women abuse children because we have all been socialized to embrace patriarchal thinking, to embrace an ethics of domination which says the powerful have the right to rule over the powerless and can use any means to subordinate them. I have thought a lot about children abuse before, but never had I thought in a feminist uh, or male domination kind of way. And coming from a totally different background from the authors, I often found myself to try to link the social issues described in the book to the social issues that happened in China now. It's funny that when I first started reading this book, I was introduced to a concept called Chinese local feminism, which I translated that by myself, so please don't quote on it. I actually still didn't find a clear definition about this like uh, Chinese local feminism, but I hear people criticizing feminism because of this group of people, which in my opinion are barely feminists at all, because their desire is to be like bossy among all the genders, which is not the spirit of feminism. So I think apparently you can tell there are a lot of issues happened in countries or areas like besides Western countries. So I was especially appreciate when Bell Hook says, however, feminist women in the West are still struggling to decolonize feminist thinking and practice so that these issues can be addressed in a manner that 
does not re-inscribe Western imperialism. Because in my personal experience, I often see people like describe the issue in China or issues around China without knowing the culture, the background, or the environment of these issues. And not to mention, sometimes people just try to apply the solutions in Western countries to Chinese local issues, which is not actually not very doable and is on some levels of neglect. So I think the attitude of bell hooks is very very important when discussing global issues. And with that being said, here's my first critique of this book, is that I wish the discussion of global feminism will be longer. <laughs> Actually, it's one of the shortest chapters in the book, which is understandable because I think bell hooks is mainly focused on the Western feminism. Also, I wish bell hooks can share more information about her study on specific topics, for example, what analysis did she do or what books did she read because I think for understanding a new concept to us, it will be easier if we can know the uh, scientific fact or historical fact behind it. For example, in the chapter called Feminist Class Struggles, there's a fact that she stated, lesbian feminist thinkers were among the first activists to raise the issue of class in feminist movement, expressing their viewpoints in an accessible language. They were a group of women who had not imagined they could depend on husband to support them. For this issue, I would much love to know like which year did people raise the issues of class in feminism study, and which group of lesbian feminism addressed the issue or who addressed the issue at the first place. Place. And the other thing discussed in our book club page was uh, there are a lot of terminologies in the book which makes the book too dry and not very accessible for people new to feminism. I personally didn't suffer from this issue, uh, I think mainly because I read this book very slowly and I took a lot of time to check um, or to look up the concept discussed in the book. But I think it's good to address that in this video. And that's all my thoughts on the book of uh, Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks. I think if you are new to feminism and very curious about it, or if you are acceptable for the feminism concept and want to learn more about the series and concept, this book is a perfect fit for you. And here is my question for today. I often found myself talk about feminism in my daily life or in my booktube channel. And also we march and also we talk about feminism in our book club. But the audience of these discussions are often people who already accept the thoughts of feminism. So how can we reach out to the people who's not very familiar with feminism concept? Or how can we uh, clarify some of the misunderstanding around feminism to the people who is not very acceptable of this concept, despite we tell them like feminism or female rights are human rights like over and over again. For example, I often hear people saying, oh, I think different genders should have like equal rights, but I'm not a feminist. Or I also hear people saying that, oh, I think like gender equality is good and in our society we're already equal. So I think for the second type of person, it's actually easier. So we just give them a lot of examples. How about the first one? <laughs> How can we communicate in a more understandable and relatable way? I found if I tell them, oh, if you are thinking gender should be equal, you are actually already accept some of the feminism thoughts. It's not very efficient. So do you have any tips on feminism communication? How do you talk to people about your feminism thoughts? Please let me know on the comment section down below. And also if you have any thoughts about feminism is for everybody, or if you have any thoughts about feminism in general, please feel free to leave your comment down below because I think communication is a very important part in uh, developing social issues. And more importantly, happy reading. See you next time. Bye.